Okay, so now that we've gotten the config tool out the way, everything has been upgraded. You're gonna notice immediately that I am using Chrome, unlike the V2 that only requires Internet Explorer. In this last firmware on the V2 Pro, you can use uh, Chrome, for example, to manage this. I'm just gonna go ahead and enter the defaults, admin and one, two, three, four, five, six. Go ahead and click on login. And these are the settings where you can control the same thing that we were doing on the other side um, with the config tool. However, you have a little bit more here that you can use. I recommend using this versus the config tool. Um, although, of course, the config tool can be useful if you're looking to manage multiple units at one point. So let's walk through a couple of settings here. Again, the system just gives you the defaults for admin. Uh, you can select other users. Those are also available here. So I can change whatever the user name is um, and so forth here. Now, there is a system setting, which again, will walk you through and show you the version and web version. Uh, most important is the version here. If, we, if you do have some issues and we request that you send us the version number, this is what we're gonna be asking you for. Uh, system time, again, you can set it to sync to your system time of your machine. Um, let's go ahead and fix this. I am on Eastern time here. America EST, let me make sure there's nothing else on here. So, yep, that will be a good one to set that to. Um, go ahead and accept the defaults. I'm just gonna go ahead and save it. And let's continue to maintenance mode so again this is the upgrade where you can also do a firmware upgrade from here um, again if you have multiple units use the config tool so you don't have to do each one if you are just doing this one you can choose and do the upgrade from here reboot again you can choose when to reboot the device um, you know you have some options here if you do daily, you can specify a time. If you do Friday, you can also specify a time. It's really up to you. Um, I would recommend you do a reboot maybe once a week um, on say a Friday, very late at night, maybe 11 o'clock. That would be good practice. Uh, most IP devices do well with a quick reboot. However, this is optional. You don't have to do that at all. We do have a couple more settings here as far as the screen itself. So again, you can do the auto mode, which enables the controls here. And you can also do the always bright or the time. So setting up a time here when the, the display should be enabled in this case. I'm just gonna go ahead and set auto mode in here. As far as network goes, a couple configurations. Again, we did this already on the config tool in the last video, same type of settings. And we have the advanced setting here, which is the email for those email alerts. Where do you want it to go? Um, here's the SMTP server. So by default, uh, Rich Tech is providing an SMTP server. Um, if you have your own, I recommend you use your own. That's probably the best approach on these. And again, you can enable server authentication if that is something yours does have. And this is where you would add where to send those emails to. So for example, david at tequipment.net. That goes right to me if there's an alert. Um, there's also an FTP option and there's the RTSP stream. So if you wanted to pull the stream of the cameras, you can do that as well here. Um, and again, you can enable or disable the configuration for that. I would recommend not changing anything on the top. Uh, if you know what RTSP is, uh, here are your streams. Going a little bit further into AI settings. So again, out of the box, everything will be here. You don't have to change anything. Uh, this is only if you're really looking to tweak some of the settings here. Um, I haven't had the need to do this with the unit at all, despite testing it in a couple of locations and uh, light conditions. Um, again, the part that may be more interesting is if you want to enable the mass detection, yes or no. If you want to enable the temperature screening, yes or no. Obviously, you probably do, so keep it on enabled. Again, out of the box, everything will be here. 
normal temperature is probably where you would adapt the high temperature to what you may need. So for example, if you wanna trigger it at 100.4, you can do that from here. Go ahead and click save. Make sure you click save each time you do a change. Um, that way you don't lose your work here. Other config, again, what happens, um, FTP upload, as we talked about in the previous setting, face tracking. Um, if we are tracking the face, in this case, we do wanna track the face. Face and screen, again, another configuration option here. Um, and I will be covering some of the uh, specific settings on another video. So I wanna do a quick overview of all the available options here. Then there's the face library. Again, you can use the unit to take a picture. There is a list as well, if there is anything in here for the people that you've added and all the records. So same as the config tool, what's been going on. You can do a query from when to when. Persons, blacklist, whitelist, uncategorized. You have those options and you can do a search at that point. Integration, this is for the access control. So again, it's set to door mode by default. You can choose it to have it in alarm mode. Again, door mode will open a door. Alarm mode will likely trigger some type of alarm you may have. Um, again, you have the UI refreshing. It's okay to keep everything as a default here. You can choose to enable to save the snapshots. So whatever the unit's capturing, enable that. That's a good privacy feature on or off. Temperature display, again, there's PII compliance across the board. If you wanna have it enabled, uh, this is where you can show it. You can also disable that on here as well. And again, you can disable any additional information on display. Uh, entry control, right now it's at the temperature, so only trigger the entry control, the, the interface on the unit uh, when the temperature is okay. You can also do for face mask, if they're wearing a face mask and their temperature is okay, and you can also do face matching, so if all three criteria are met. I don't recommend having the face matching on if you are gonna have guests, maybe perhaps not even mass detection. Uh, you do wanna get those guests in. There's electronic lock parameters, so again, how long to trigger the output signal. Um, and this is in seconds, so for example, maybe a switch may need a, around a five second. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. So five seconds here. Um, error messages, again, you can choose to what to display on the unit. Please put your mask on. Uh, unregister, maybe you wanna call this visitor. Um, found in blacklist, you can say access denied. So again, if you ban someone, you don't want the, the allow access in that case. Go ahead and click on that as well. And if you see any issues like that, you can make a quick tweak there. And volume, volume is good. You want to make sure you decrease to this as needed. Um, I'm going to go back into the unit here. So the alarm sounds a little bit more reasonable as opposed to the default, which is very loud. So again, a couple more configurations. On the next video, we're actually going to talk about some of those privacy settings uh, and making some tweaks to the unit itself.